There are times for all of us where we need some motivation on the spot. And how can we actually create that either for us, for a son or a daughter, for potentially a team member? And I'm going to talk you through three different ways that if you want to feel motivated at any point in time throughout your days, any of these three things and all of them especially will help you feel more motivated instantaneously with whatever it is that you're doing. Welcome to the Outperform Podcast. My name is Scott Welly. I'm an author, speaker, and the founder of Outperform the Norm, a global movement that helps people achieve peak performance in their personal and professional lives. I've spent my life working with top performers in business as well as athletics, and each week it's my aim and mission to bring you an inspiring person to share their personal stories and insights, or perhaps it'll be a personal message from me, but with one very simple goal in mind, to help you outperform. Your time is precious, and I want to thank you for spending it with me here today. But just one small ask before we get started. If you find value from this podcast, the greatest way that you could possibly thank me would be to head on over to iTunes or whatever your favorite podcast platform happens to be and give it a five-star review. Also share it with somebody that you know that you would like to help outperform so we can all grow this movement together and strive to make the world a healthier, happier, higher performing place. Once again, thank you for being here. And without further ado, let's get started. Welcome back to the Outperform Podcast. I hope you are having a fantastic day. And last night I had a unique speaking engagement. And I don't get to do a lot of these types of engagements with traveling around, speaking at conferences to organizations, businesses, etc. But last night I spoke for a large group of 13 to 18 year old volleyball players, mostly girls, some boys. And these engagements certainly don't pay my bills, uh, but they really are passion filled speaking engagements because any time that I get to do them, I always think about, God, what were the messages I would have loved to hear when I was their age that I likely never heard from coaches, from speakers, maybe my parents, kind of et cetera. And as you're listening to this, this has nothing to do with, I don't know my exact audience out there, but I seriously doubt I have that many 13 to 18 year old volleyball players probably listening to this right now. But trust me, what we're going to talk about today applies to you and to every single person out there. Because after I got done having them do some different interactions with those 12 to 14 different teams um, of the varying age levels and competition levels, after I had them doing do some different interactive exercises and things like that, I opened it up for Q&A at the end. And the three questions that I got at the end of talking about some different ways that they could have peak performance in their goals, in their game day strategies, as I call it, et cetera. The three questions I got were the first one was basically something to the effect of how do I help a teammate when they've made a mistake and they can't move past it? Then the second person raises their hand and says, how do I get my energy back when I'm just feeling a little bit lower, I'm feeling down? And then the third and final one, a coach raises her hand and says, what do I do if I've exhausted every single tool in my toolbox or every option or or technique that I have, what can I do to be able to motivate my team? And whether you realize it or not, all three of these questions are basically dealing with the same root issue or they want the same sort of benefit as far as how do I get motivated or how do I motivate someone else when they're feeling low, when they're feeling down, if they made a mistake and they can't move past it, and when they are just stuck and have just a lack of energy. And you probably know by now that I am actually a much bigger fan of creating habits and patterns, routines, and in particular, disciplines, and looking at the discipline a little bit more than motivation. But there are times for all of us where we need some motivation on the spot. 
And how can we actually create that either for us, for a son or a daughter, for potentially a team member? And I'm going to talk you through three different ways that if you want to feel motivated at any point in time throughout your days, any of these three things and all of them especially will help you feel more motivated instantaneously with whatever it is that you're doing. And the first thing that I kind of want to start out with before I even go into these three strategies is anytime people talk about motivation, usually the language they'll use to talk about it is a feeling, right? Motivation is an emotion. It's something that we have to create and we have to manifest within us, which is why it, it is possible to do it whenever you want to do it, but it's difficult to do it at a sustained high level and to do it at on command for a long period of time because what you're talking about is raising your emotional level or raising the feeling inside of you rather than one of the ways that and one of the reasons that we actually create habits, patterns, disciplines, etc. is because once those things are built in, they require less energy for us to be able to sustain them. So the first part of understanding, okay, I want to be more motivated, I want to have more energy is, all right, well, then we need to create a feeling or we need to create an emotion within you for you to be able to harness that motivation for you to be able to have it. So three things that I will share. First and foremost, posture. This is the physiology of peak performance. And probably the best way that I can explain this and what I explained to the youth athletes last night is... As I'm recording this, the Olympics are going to be coming up in Paris this summer. Watch any sport or watch any competitive event and watch what people do afterwards, whether they've won or lost. Watch their posture. What you will see is for the people that have maybe gotten on the podium or certainly the people that have won, what you'll see is they'll probably have head up, chest out, shoulder blades back, throw their arms up in the air. And regardless of what corner of the globe they come from and what country they they originate from, this will be their inherent biological response because it is what we do when we feel an intense sense of pride and accomplishment in what we are doing or what we have just done. And it's not anything that any of us in any culture were ever taught. And if you think about kind of the reverse side of this, for those that maybe haven't had their best performance, that haven't got on the podium, you're going to see them do the exact opposite. You're going to see them kind of curl up into what we call this protracted posture where you're basically curling up with your head in your hands a little bit. Um, you know, you're going to be bent forward from your shoulders, from your hips, kind of et cetera, sort of curling up a little bit into the fetal position, so to speak. And the interesting part of this is, so what am I telling you for motivation? You're supposed to just walk around every single time you want to feel motivated by throwing your hands up in the air like you've just won an Olympic gold medal. Well, if you did that, you would actually feel a lot more motivated immediately. But I'm actually talking about the micro part of that, where if you want to feel more motivated immediately, instantaneously, Pay attention to your posture. And all I simply want you to do is stand up taller or sit up taller, have your head up, your chest out, your shoulder blades back, and you will immediately feel a different level of energy residing within your body. And it is really difficult to not feel motivated when you are in a very open, proud, confident posture. So that's the first one is posture. Second one, pattern interrupt. When I talk about a pattern interrupt, the example that I gave is they've just started spring training for Major League Baseball. And I actually showed a picture of a softball player because we had a lot of girls in attendance, but it applies for both. You watch any great hitter, whether we're talking about softball player or baseball player, they will go and they'll be standing in the batter's box. And even though Major League Baseball is a pitch clock now where they're trying to speed things up, you will see any great hitter that when they're in the batter's box, after they've taken a pitch, they'll step out of the batter's box. They'll usually adjust their helmet a bit. Maybe they'll loosen up the Velcro on their glove and then kind of tighten it up again. Maybe they'll adjust their stance a bit and then they'll get ready and then they'll take the next pitch. 
And when they do this, it has nothing to do with, I need to actually adjust my helmet or I need to loosen or tighten my glove or adjust my stance. It is literally something that hitters are trained to do as a pattern interrupt that they use that regardless of whether the last pitch was a strike or whether it was a ball, it's a way for them to be able to start fresh with whatever it is that they're doing. I use the same example where I show a picture of Roger Federer, tennis great, where he's actually got a towel in between points and he's wiping off his forehead, even though he was wearing a big Nike headband that's supposed to catch the sweat before it goes into his eyes. That is another way of what tennis players are trained to do is to do something and they're figuratively and literally taking a towel in between points and wiping away the sweat as a way to wipe away whatever happened with the last point, whether it was an unforced error or whether it was a winner. And this is something that you can use that if you find that, oh, I'm just stuck and I'm, I'm struggling to feel motivated and to move past something, maybe you're sitting at your desk and you just can't kind of feel the juice or feel the flow, a pattern interrupt, because it is something you actually do, get up and physically remove yourself from that environment. It can be as simple as I'm going to go to the bathroom, I'm going to go outside for five minutes, I'm going to go get a glass of water, and then when I come back and when I sit back down at this desk, I'm going to start fresh. The same way that a hitter would where I'm wipe, I'm not worried about what happened, whether the last pitch was a strike or a ball, or a tennis player's not worried whether it was an unforced error or a winner, you can do the same exact thing by creating a pattern interrupt and something that stops your current level of demotivation or kind of feeling unmotivated. And then when you go back and re-engage into that situation, after you've done whatever it is you are going to do, you can then start fresh. And third, and finally, is to have some type of a power phrase. And this is a completely individual, unique one to you. I've talked about it on a number of different levels with identity-based behavior, et cetera. And it's very similar, where I've never met someone that doesn't have something that you can say to them, and this is where, especially if we're talking about athletically, great coaches know how to tap into and pull the individual strings to be able to get the best out of an athlete. And if you're doing this for yourself, you should know or you should really spend some time thinking about, if I'm feeling demotivated or if I'm lacking energy, what can I say to myself via my own self-talk to be able to get that motivation up? You can look at it as simply as carrots and sticks, where perhaps you're thinking about an extrinsic reward or something that you will get for doing a behavior that maybe you're not motivated to do right now. You can think about it in terms of, of the stick or the punishment or something that'll happen if you don't actually engage in the behavior. You can think about a competitive part of, hey, if I'm trying to, I'm not feeling motivated to make these sales calls, but I know that this person that I'm competing against is making the calls. So if I think about that, it's immediately going to increase my motivation. The same way an athlete might be thinking about another athlete training when they don't feel motivated to go out and train, you have to have these things and you have to be able to, they're tools in your own individual toolbox. And certainly they can be tools in a coaching toolbox, but it's something that you should have for yourself. Because if you can tap into that and if you know, hey, I don't need to use this 24-7, 365 with myself, but if there is ever a time where I make a mistake and I can't move forward from it, or I'm feeling a lack of energy or a motivation, or I'm just, I've exhausted all of my options. What can I say to myself to be able to snap me out of it so I can move forward? And we all have different things like this. And a lot of people, the norm does not even do this introspection and this insight and even think on this level. And I always say, if you don't bring it to the race, you're not going to find it out there. So if we're waiting until a time where we're actually demotivated to, oh crap, now I need to come up with some type of a power phrase or something I can say to myself, you're already in the race. You're not going to find it out there. 
So actually thinking about it ahead of time and thinking about what can I say to myself in the way of a power phrase and bringing that to the race, now all of a sudden when you go through some of these periods, you're going to be more equipped to be able to deal with them and to be able to bounce back from it. So again, in looking at motivation as a feeling, if at any point in time, I will promise you, you want to tap into any of these different things and you want to enhance your own feeling and emotion and level of internal motivation. All you need to do is be mindful of your posture and get in that proud, open, dominant, confident posture that is part of the physiology of peak performance or and (laughs) you can do either one or or and do a pattern interrupt physically remove yourself from the situation like a tennis player would from the last point like a batter would from the batter's box and do a pattern interrupt where you can more start fresh or and (laughs) have a power phrase have something that you can say to yourself that's going to help anchor in and and help you Pull the trigger on that behavior that maybe you're not feeling that motivated to do. All of these things are going to help you be your best, are going to help you continue to be motivated, to outperform, and as always, wishing you the best of health, happiness, and high performance. Thanks so much for listening. Have a fantastic day. Hello, Outperformers. Three more quick things before we sign off here today. First and foremost, thank you so much for listening to this episode. I understand how many different podcasts are out there, and I do not take a single second of your time for granted because time is truly our most valuable asset. It is our most precious commodity, and I appreciate you taking that time and you spending it with us here today. Second, if you found value in this podcast, maybe you've noticed, but podcasting has gotten quite popular as of late. And if you would like to help support the Outperforming Movement and the Outperform Podcast, one of the best ways that we can get it found is for you to give it a favorable review and rating on whatever your favorite podcasting platform happens to be. So head on over to iTunes, head on over to Google Play, and give it a favorable review. And while you do that, also share it with someone else that you know that is just like you, is driven by growth and wanting to be the best personally and professionally in every single thing that they do. Number three, if you want even more tools and tips and strategies to be able to be your best personally and professionally, head on over to scottwelly.com. That's S-C-O-T-T-W-E-L-L-E. There are loads of different resources for you on everything from goal setting and grit to resiliency and focus to confidence and motivation and routines and habits and everything that you can possibly imagine to help you be your absolute best every single day, personally and professionally. Once again, if you'd like to access those free resources, head on over to scottwelly.com, S-C-O-T-T-W-E-L-L-E. So as I sign off, thank you again for spending your time with me here today. Keep outperforming and as always, wish you the best of health, happiness, and high performance. Have a great day.